Hey everybody, welcome to the stream. My name is Amy. Uh, I'm a district manager for Zoomies out of Atlanta, and I am so super stoked to be your host tonight. We've got a really rad time planned for you all. Today, as a part of our Your Art is Your Voice series, we're going to chat with Stance Punks and Poets member and artist Kevin Lyons. We're going to talk about his new Stance Vote Sock dropping on September 15th at Zoomies near you. We're gonna talk about how he uses his art to express himself and why he believes your vote matters. Plus a few tips for all you new artists starting out out there. We've also got a behind the scenes look at how he creates his famous monsters. Can't wait for you guys to see that. And do not worry, we're not gonna leave you guys empty handed. Stick around and you could win a one of a kind piece of art from Kevin. Ooh, exciting. Plus, we're giving away 15 pairs of the Stance boat socks he designed, and they're going to get to you before they even hit stores. Um, we're also going to be dropping Zoomy stash points in the chat, so keep an eye out for that. If you want to have a chance to win, you can do two things in the chat, okay? You can either drop a question for Kevin, or you can tell us what you're standing up for with your vote or with your voice and why. So get those going on there. We're gonna pick our favorites and announce the winners towards the end of the stream. So go ahead and hit that chat and stick around. Okay, before we bring Kevin on, uh, we wanna check out a clip from Stance to introduce him to you if you may not know him or his art. So go ahead and beam that up, Scotty. When I was young, all I did was draw. It was really more about everyday drawing. and never thinking, oh, I can make a life out of this. I am heavily influenced by the cartoons that I grew up with. Jim Henson was like a god to me. Keith Haring had a pop shop, t-shirts, everything. I saw that and said, I could do that. Like, that seems amazing. That's the new graffiti. When I first started doing the monsters, it was because my oldest daughter wouldn't eat her lunch. So I decided to put these monsters in her lunch that said like, eat your eggs, I'll break your legs. And just these funny, weird sayings. Eat it all, have a ball. So that's really where the characters begin. The monsters are the monsters and they travel in packs. They have all types of personalities. They don't have names, no. The fact that Stance not only makes a great sock that I wear anyway, to then put my characters on it and it be produced so well, it was kind of a no-brainer to come out with this sock right away. I used the watercolor technique that I do a lot of illustration with. What's important about this sock too is that it has the athletic stripe. I took advantage of the entire kind of sock on this one, so it goes all the way around to the back side. This is much more thinking about what a sock does and how a sock fits on your feet. This sock is really meant to wear with no shoes. Stance had the idea of making this funky colorway, which I know is a women's colorway, but I would totally rock these two. So one, was more thinking about sculpturally what a sock does, and the other one was more thinking about just representing my characters. So if people wanted to buy the monsters on socks, now they have monsters on socks. My philosophy is always I just, I make stuff. That's what I do every day. Hey Kevin, thanks for jumping on today. Hey, thank you very much. It's good to be here for sure. Yeah. So we're going to get a few questions answered from you. All the audience is dying to know. Um, can you just start by telling us a little bit about yourself? So where you're from? How old were you when you started doing art? Anything of that, of that like? In yeah, I am an artist and a designer, originally a designer, now an artist illustrator. I work and live uh, in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I've been here on and off for about 25 years. I have a studio in Red Hook, Brooklyn. I basically am a painter and I create these characters that have grown in to be, become something of, a, of their own entity. I call them the monsters and I paint them all over the world and I do a lot of collaborations and things like that. So um, I'm just an all around kind of like uh, started as a designer, like I said, and then worked my way into um, doing murals, illustrations, uh, footwear, t-shirts have always been a big part of my life. So yeah, and I'm here representing Stance uh, with a new collaboration. So psyched to be here. Awesome. Yeah, those monsters you talked about, that's definitely something you're known for. Um, 
you have one featured on the vote sock that you did in collaboration with Stance. What inspired you to start creating those monsters and those creatures? Well, um, you know, as I came up through the ranks, I went to uh, film school, then design school. And um, as a graphic designer, you're often doing a lot of what other people ask you to do. So you're making logos for companies, you're working within the walls of other people's uh, look and feel. And the whole time I was always drawing these characters. And I think a lot of them come from my subconscious from being a, just a child and growing up. So the Simpsons, Garfield, Hanna-Barbera, um, you know, uh, Bugs Bunny, all these other things, all these sort of influences that built up me, built up in me as a kid. And I used to sketch these monsters all the time. And then eventually I had two daughters and it was a point in my life where I was kind of looking for my own style. I was looking to do my own thing and break out of sort of just the design world. And I stumbled upon these characters for them, really. Like I started drawing them, putting them in their lunches, you know, just entertaining them basically at the dinner table with these drawings. And then I just started showing them to people and people really responded to them. And I took a chance and sort of started putting them out there. And a few very like uh, important people in my life sort of picking, started picking them up and supporting them. And lo and behold, like the world loved the monsters all along. And these were things that I was just like putting in my sketchbook while I was on like telephone calls and, and conferences and other things. So I just had sheets and sheets of these sketches and, um, you know, they're really fun to draw. They're really fun to live in. And they've, they've just been an amazing kind of, they've taken me on a journey I just didn't expect to go on, so. Awesome. Yeah, it sounds like they connect to a lot of emotions and moments from your life. And it is so amazing when people who support you latch onto that and understand that. A uh, side note, what was your daughter's favorite lunch you used to pack for them? just out of curiosity. Well, that's the thing is I started putting the monsters in my eldest daughter's lunch because she wouldn't eat her lunch. So I would draw these monsters that would say something like, you know, eat your eggs or I'll break your legs, which is a quote from Beat Street or, you know, like eat it all up or you won't get sup or something like that. I'd come up with these monsters screaming things. I'd stick it in her lunch to get her to try to eat her lunch because she just refused to eat it. And then the teacher in her like pre-K class would read it out loud to the whole class. And then eventually I think it worked, but I don't know, like the, <laughs> yeah. the monsters worked. I don't know if it really made her eat her lunch or not. So ironically, your question is flawed in the sense of, she really didn't eat her lunch, no matter what I packed. So the monsters were my way of sort of starting to do that. And ironically, they turned into something bigger and mm -hmm. they sort of feed her now, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nope, nope, dad of the year. Love it. <laughs> well, you're always trying, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so I know you actually created a piece for this live stream that I I did, I created a piece. I, I. I think you have it up here. I'm hoping that there's a, a time lapse that I did and I have it here in the, <gasps> with me. So that's the piece that someone could win out there based yeah. on whoever Zoomies picks, but, and it would come from my home. It's just a quick kind of drawing watercolor with a lot of pencil and it's kind of what I do on a daily basis. So, you know, someone lucky will probably be able to hang this somewhere. Um, but yeah, we wanted to do something, you know, sort of to promote the stream, get people to come on. And then, of course, there's some people that are going to win my socks, too, that I did with Stan. So mm -hmm. uh, it's like yeah. on that as well. So this is a great opportunity to help promote um, those and, you know, get maybe a new audience to kind of discover some of my stuff. So, yeah, I think we're going to have a that time lapse running. Is that correct? Um, would you mind just talking about the process? You said there's watercolor, there's all kinds of things going on, but yeah. how does that I, step yeah, there? No, I, I, I love talking about my process. My process is actually very old school. It starts with a piece of paper and a pencil. Um, I don't really touch the computer until I start to really develop the drawing a lot. And so I'll develop the drawing, draw it, draw it, draw it, maybe draw it a couple times, um, either with a light table or just redraw it a couple times. And then I'll scan that into the computer. And that's where I do a lot of 
the manipulating and a lot of the cleaning up. I tend not to vector things. I like to keep them as line drawing. So I'll clean up with ink. Um, I'm very old school. It's like layers is how I work. Sort of like silk screening where you like lay down a base layer, then another color, then a shadow color, and then you eventually put the drawing on top. So that's sort of the way that I work. And I've worked that way for a really long time. Um, and it takes a really long time. That's the frustrating part. It's not an easy click, 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 pump out work, but it is a process. And the good part of it is it leaves a lot of the stuff really gestural and very energetic. And I always believe that the beauty is in the flaw. So, you know, I, I like building sort of that disruption into the work. Like it can be messy. The monsters don't have to be perfect. There's so many of them. Um, I very rarely draw like one monster. They're always together. So, um, you know, that kind of type of sketchiness I'm really drawn to. Artists who have who work that way uh, is very much I'm a fan of as well. So yeah, that's kind of how I work. And this represents that like, I'll, I'll, I sketch this uh, and you'll see in the process, I sketched it, then I did the watercolor, then another layer of watercolor, then another layer. And then eventually you're going in with like a darker pencil or a softer pencil and sort of layering it in and cleaning it up. And it's not that different than how I work, like making a t-shirt or making a shoe or, um, or even a mural for that matter. Like, I think we have some photos that they're gonna be posting as we do this chat where you see like these base layers of my murals as well. So it's kind of like color within the lines and then start to build that line back up. So it's very much an animation technique like cell animation or silk screen, that type of thing, so. Yeah, well, the time you put into it definitely shows uh, that's definitely a super great piece. Like I'm excited for someone to take it home. Yeah. Uh, and thanks for walking us through that. I do want to remind everybody in the chat, uh, if you have questions for Kevin, that's an entry for not only that, that beautiful, cool painting he showed, but uh, the socks. So make sure you're keeping putting those questions in or talking to us about what you're standing up for. All right, you ready for more, Kevin? Yes, yes. Shoot. I'm yeah. here. So aside from those signature monsters, what other subjects do you gravitate towards when drawing or creating art? Well, for the most part, that's what people want from me at this point. So sometimes I'll try to draw some other things and then they'll put me right back in my place because that's kind of the, the MO right now. But within that monster world, I have many other characters. So I have like a donut character. I think I have a sticker here. Like I have a donut character that exists as a donut. I have a pyramid character that, um, that is within that as well. There's a little bomb dude. Um, you know, I'll draw rainbow dudes, like, and sometimes I'm just like, I'm taking abstract things and putting eyes on it. So I, I used to draw a lot of food with eyes and mouths and everything else. And then I also work and do the Jolly Rancher characters for Hershey's. Like if you've ever bought a pack of Jolly Ranchers, those, I work on those characters and develop those guys. Um, and they basically are a whole nother set of characters with a whole nother set of personalities. So you know, within that variety, I, I do a lot of illustration and sort of bring a lot of inanimate objects or food or other things to life. So there's a beach ball character and, you know, it's just sort of taking it in a very Muppet Jim Henson way. I'm just picturing everything with eyes and a mouth. And, you know, the, it's really interesting to me to do that. So that's something. I also do a lot of typography because I'm you know, by nature, a graphic designer, and I love drawing letter forms. So I do a lot of like fun bubble type and different letter forms and things like that. And also, I, I, you know, I love music. So I'm often borrowing from the music world or drawing into the music world. And even when I make a mural or, um, or work somewhere or travel, I'll make like a playlist that's in the back of my mind. So Music's really important to me um, and drives a lot of what I do. I, I, I'm always working with music in the background and music sort of dominates everything I do. I'm a big record collector and just a mass collector of music and I'm always working on that as well. So there's different influences like that for sure. But um, 
but I, I love the challenge of going like, hey, my, you know, I want to do something about winter. So we do like a snowball monster and a mountain monster and we put them together and that type of thing. So that challenge of like turning objects that aren't meant to be alive into these sort of live characters that fit within the monster world, but aren't necessarily monsters or interesting to me, so. Yeah, I love all the, just all the areas you drive creativity from music, you know, your old inspiration from the Muppets. That's really cool. And the monsters really are not to, sorry to interrupt, but the monsters really are, I mean, the whole theme in this I know is expressing yourself and, and really using your own voice. And for me, the monsters became my own voice. Like a lot of times, like I said before, as a designer, as a young designer, you're constantly doing what you're told. And the monsters allow me to just do me, to, to have my own style and have my own thing that people actually want me to do. And they ask me what I think I should be doing. And that's a big transition for a young designer to go into and, and start to do. And I think all of the characters, all of the monsters, even on a wall of 500 monsters, all 500 represent some, some point of me because it's all coming from my head. So some are screaming, some are joking, some are loud, some are obnoxious, and then some are super like quiet and mellow. And, and, uh, and so th it really runs the gamut. So a lot of times like people will come up to the wall and be like, that's me before coffee, or that's me when I, you know, after a late night, or that's me, you know, when I have to go to school. And I love the identification of like, they're seeing themselves in these characters and, that's the way I see them as well. I see the characters in me as well. So it's really allowed me to push and express things that maybe I was limited to in some of the forms of creation that I was doing earlier, you know? Awesome. Yeah, you said, you know, this one's screaming, this one's joking. Now there's, this one's voting, yes. right? Part yeah. of this line, um, why, why is this so important to you? And why is it important that you use art to express your voice as a voter? Well, I was really, I mean, I think artists always have some, you know, we, we have the same, uh, we have the same need to express our opinions and our, our, our beliefs. And, you know, like art has always been a way for people to broadcast some of those things like propaganda art and things like that. That's nothing new, like graphic designers have been doing this forever. For me, when Stance came to me about doing a voting sock, it was kind of a no brainer. I'm like, oh, that's an amazing idea. Like, you know, t-shirts have always been these vehicles of like political slogans, like you're wearing one right now. That's very valuable, like, and homelessness, like it, and like, but socks are often things are like just decoration, right? So the idea of putting like voting and having a voting message on your socks that you wear every single day. I thought that would be a fun way to sort of attack this and to represent that, that feeling. And for me, obviously voting has always been super important. Um, and I have an 18 year old daughter, that same daughter that I used to make monsters for and put her in a lunch. She is now about to vote for the first time. So even within my home, it's become more important than it ever has before. Like usually I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna vote this year. I'll vote for the president again. And she's seeing it as a brand new experience. So that's awakened me to that. And then on top of that, like the voting numbers for youth are kind of abysmal over the last couple presidential elections as well. And so I know that those same young people that sometimes don't vote, they're also the most creative people I know. And the way that they attack politics and promote their beliefs online and on social media, on Instagram, on Twitch, um, it, it's amazing. So I want those same people that put all that effort into the memes that they make about politics to hopefully be inspired to go to the polls and devote their conscience and I think only then you'll represent the way that you want your life to be. And these decisions about one person in one office are interesting, but that one person in one office can affect the Supreme Court for the next 30 years or Supreme or affect judges for the next generation. So I think it's important just to be part of the message, whether you're on whatever side you're on, it's 
just really important to go to the polls. And so this was a great opportunity to just make something that puts that in your mind again. And hopefully people wear them around and reminds others to do it. And it's not just about also just voting. It's also about help people get to the polls, volunteer for the voting. Like there's a lot of people need volunteers. Some people can't drive themselves to the polls. So if you can drive a bunch of elderly people or people without licenses or your friends to schools, remind people about when their deadline is to vote um, by mail, which is really important has become a big issue. So for me, it's loaded with meaning to do these socks and to make this message. Um, and yeah, it's and plus it's just super fun to make monster socks. I've made a lot with Stance. We've been great partners for a long time. So to have the opportunity for the monsters to scream vote is awesome. So. Well, thank you for making them and sharing with us your passion for that. Uh, I think now it's time to see if we got some questions from the audience. Fire away. All righty. Um, okay. What is your most memorable drawing or art piece? Um, uh, well, that's a good, that's a good, I, I mean, there's a few murals that I've done, like in Detroit, in Hawaii, there's a really, there's a mural that really was the first mural that I did that really started to be the way I wanted to paint, which took a very long time in my life to get to. Um, but I have to say the first piece of monster art that I ever did, which was taking all these different monsters in the lunches and putting them together. And it was for a show in like 2008 at Colette, which became one of my biggest collaborators. Like I, I worked with Colette for well over 10, 15 years after that time. And that, that first, very first monster piece went into a show at Colette and it was bought by Pedro Winter who owns Ed Banger Records, um, famous DJ and like friend as well. And he put it in his daughter's room. And for some reason, just that was like the, that was a really a confirmation that both Colette loved it. And this guy who I respected tremendously loved it. And I, I saw like something there that I was like, wow, that's cool. And then I can't, I can't ignore the fact that my first pair of Air Max 360s was you know, a dream come true to make a Nike shoe. So, and have a monster on a Nike shoe was pretty incredible. And that was like in 2002. So yeah, I mean, there, you never, I don't know if you have one. It's hard to ever say one, you know? Yeah, I'm sure it's hard. Um, okay, uh, so the next question is from Bobbly Bob Bob, username. Uh, Kevin, how did you decide to make art your career? Well, at, in a way, I didn't really have a choice because I grew up basically drawing, listening to music, and playing sports. And that's all I ever did when I was a kid. I would draw everything and anything under the sun. Like my science project in sixth grade was to design my own shoe. And I took a bandsaw to my dad's pair of Nikes trimmed it down the middle, put it in a box, showed, showed everybody. Um, I just kept drawing and drawing and drawing. And when it was time to go to college, I had a great high school art teacher who really inspired me and really inspired me to think about art as a career because I don't think enough people are really told that you can make money in art like, and that you can have a career in art. And then, you know, I just drew, I was drawing skateboards, um, band logos, mixtapes, zines. And um, when it was time to go to school, I just decided like, you know what, I'm just going to keep going. And so I went to the Rhode Island School of Design, RISD, um, and then just kept making stuff. And that, and that became my career. I, you know, that old adage of like, do something you love, you know, I mean, design, design and art can also be something that you hate on some days, but for the most part, it's one of the better jobs that you can ever have. So it is really doing what you love. You know? Wonderful. Sounds like it. Okay. Uh, next, uh, who dat boy says, what were some challenges that you had when designing the socks or just designing in general? Um, 
I don't think there's a lot. The socks, the difficult part with socks, I think, is just to try to I I don't want to make socks that are just like licensed products that just have stuff all over them. So I always think about like the striping at the top of the sock, like the wearability of socks is super important. And I have to say something not to I know this is all promoting stance, but I went through many rounds of like other companies trying to make socks and the monsters just never turned out that well until I found Stance. And Stance has a way, and they work with some of the biggest artists on the planet, like Neckface and Jay Howell and, um, and uh, Mark Gonzalez. Like these are artists that really pay attention to what they do. And for me, like when I saw the replication of the monsters, it, it, the quality is just so nice that um, I can do watercolor like this one had watercolor on it. You know, it has watercolor in the background. And but I do like to think of the entire sock. So we thought all the way down and like just how it sits. So when your shoe is on, how the monsters pop out and you if you there maybe some people here who own some of my old socks, like hopefully they always are like they're really good when you take your shoes off, too. I always think about what socks look like when you don't have shoes on as well. So. Yeah, yeah. I can tell you uh, in the other room, there's a pile of stance socks um, from my significant other. Uh, yeah. So we love them in this house, <laughs> for yeah. sure. I agree with you there. Um, okay, all righty. Uh, so now, thank you for all your questions. Um, cool. We are gonna go ahead and announce the winners. Oh, wow, okay. That's... Uh, oh, um, actually, yeah, I think we have time for one more question. Okay. Uh, sorry about that, y'all. I don't want it. Y'all have so many good ones. Um, okay, this one's good from Magic Matt 710. Um, what is the best way to distract yourself from people who put you down about your work? Well, it's my advice to artists in general, which is just keep doing it, like keep working and not get worried about what people think because you're going to go through as an artist or as a designer you're going to go through many stages and stuff can be ugly and stuff can be not right and maybe you get somewhat derivative of another artist and then you know like there's just a sense of like you have to be confident about the end game you have to be work out all of that angst that you get from other people by just continuing to draw and continuing to like put your head down, stay to the grind and like keep moving forward because yeah, there, it's, you know, the art world and not so much the art world, even just design in general, like art in general, it's competitive because, you know, you're all competing to sort of stay alive in this world. And so, there, there are going to be haters and detractors and stuff like that. And, and some of those people are, you know, start out as your friends and go other ways and or, or whatever. But I think you just have to stay doing you. And like, you know, I always tell people like the best advice I can give to anyone is just keep drawing, keep making stuff. Like if you make one zine, make another zine, make pins, make, you know, go analog, go digital, make websites, Pinterest pages, you know, uh, put out your music on Bandcamp, make your own album cover for that. Like, just like put yourself out there. And yeah, there's going to be people that hate it, but there's going to be tons of people who wind up loving it as well. So it's just a matter of like, do, do, do. And, and hopefully it just all works itself out, you know. Awesome. All right, we got time for one more question. All right. So... Mira Ann 13 asks, have young adults inspired your vote collection? Young adults have, and that goes back to my daughter for sure, but like her and her friends and also like, you know, I often work with people, you know, like art has no age. So often I'm at mural fest with kids who are in their twenties. Um, I have people who assist me on work and assist me on murals that are young and active socially and like really active politically. And then I think just like, you know, I actually went to some of the protests that were, you know, the Black Lives Matter protests with my daughters and saw like the camaraderie 
Um, and even in the age of COVID, like people taking care of themselves, like um, all, everyone wearing masks, putting, you know, using hand sanitizer, passing out waters during the hot summer, like all those things are like pretty awesome. Like that's that, you know, I've been inspired by that. And I am also really inspired to like help those same, same people make sure that they vote. Like I would love to see the percentage go up of young people voting. And if for nothing else, that someday they're going to think about it and be like, oh yeah, I should have voted then. And, you know, I had a chance and, and especially in like some of the states that really matter, the Pennsylvania's, the, the um, Michigan's and Wisconsin's of the world, Ohio, you know, even Arizona and places like that, they're all sort of like, it's just really important to at least have a say and feel like you you've done something. So, but definitely the fervor around my like daughters, both daughters, I have a 14 year old and 18 year old and um, both really active. Um, and yeah, that it definitely was one of those things where I was like, yeah, hell yeah. I want them to wear these socks too. So. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I agree. You know, this generation of youth has just been so incredibly inspiring. Um, and I, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, wearing the socks and just doing what they do out there uh, is, is wonderful. So, all righty, that's all the time we have for questions, but Kevin, you want to stick around to announce the winners? I am more than willing to stick around and announce the winners. Yeah. So you got uh, some stuff for giving away. The first thing we said was that beautiful super rad art piece you want to hold it up again for us i do yeah all right now literally you saw the time lapse folks he created this for you the winner is when the smoke clears congrats you're gonna win the art piece when Um, the smoke clears that's the name username yep Mm -hmm. the name when the smoke clears congratulations awesome and now we got some socks to give out as well once again getting them before they they drop um i'm just gonna yell them off rapid fire okay so check the chat um and then look to your your messages after bobbly bob bob who dat boy magic matt 710 mirror and 13 she smokes trees cons 2016 uh night die killer under the above arctic goal marshall j porter Toxic Chills, Happy Camper, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Toach Froche, Loot Dog 83, and Skate Vans 88. Congrats. Wow, that's amazing. That's I do want to share, I want to share what when the smoke clears stands up for and his message. So okay, cool. This is what they so, said. Uh, I've said this already, but if you want change, you have to be the change. You have to actively use your voice to inspire change. I stand against racism, sexism, ableism, and injustice. Whether it be sharing an article or protesting in the street, everything you do matters. That's wonderful. Thank you, When the Smoke Clears. Congrats on winning that piece. All right. Um, Yeah, thanks for not only asking questions, but sharing why voting matters to you. It really is so powerful to share that. Uh, Chances are there's probably a lot of people out there who feel the same way and they may be afraid to stand up. But when you stand up and talk about those things, it gives them courage and it empowers us all to stand up. So Kevin, thank you again for taking the time to chat with us. Thank you for the art you create. Thank you for spreading the word on why voting matters. Uh, Do you have any last words for everyone watching? No, just everyone you know, stay safe, please get out there and vote when it's time and try to just do whatever you do to get through your day and make you happy and continue to do it and draw, 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 make stuff, make stuff, make stuff. That's all I can really say. And thanks for Zoomies hosting this. And of course, Stance for putting putting out the socks themselves. And uh, yeah, th- and thank you for hosting. I really appreciate it and yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's been no great. Thank you to everyone who tuned in as well. I appreciate it. Yeah. Make sure you go f- uh, learn more about him and follow him. Uh, K Lyons Natborn. Is that? Uh, That's my and- Instagram. Yep. K Lyons. K L Y O N S Natborn. All right. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Thank All right. you.
Yeah. I want to, uh, just a few more things, everyone out there. I do want to remind all the artists watching, you still have time to enter Zoomies. Your art is your voice. Open call. So learn more and submit your art. There's a link in the chat um, to give you guys more information if you haven't heard about that awesome contest. One more thing. We got to talk. We got to talk about registering to vote and turning out to vote. Um, it is so important that you not only register, but actually show up at the polls. We got to make sure we do our part. We got to educate our peers, demand your voices be heard, guys. That's how we create change. Now, a lot of us are going to be voting by mail this year. I know Kevin mentioned earlier. Um, don't wait to request your absentee ballot. You can go to vote.org slash absentee dash ballot to confirm if you can vote by mail in your state and then go ahead and request your absentee ballot. You know, no one wants to wait in line, right? So you wanna fill your absentee ballot out at home, mail it back ASAP so you can make sure that your, vo your vote counts, all right? Now I know there's a lot of passionate people in this chat that are too young to vote. That's okay, your voice still matters, absolutely. Use it to talk with your family and friends, um, make sure that they're registered and they get out there and get out in your communities and support in any way you can. You matter. Um, you can also head to your local Zoomies, chat with us, get registered to vote, learn more about your plan to vote. Got to know your polling place, when you're going, all that good stuff. You can also do that online at zoomies.com slash stand up. And if you didn't win those socks, no worries. You can pick them up September 15th at a Zoomies or online at zoomies.com. So finally, guys, get registered, go vote, use your voice. Peace out. Yeah, yeah. When you find out when you love, gotta make sure that you love them right. Yeah. yeah. When you find out when you love, gotta make sure that you love them right. Yeah. yeah. When you find out when you love, gotta make sure that you love them right. Yeah. yeah. When you find out when you love. I got a girl that compliments my fly And when it goes down, I know she gon' ride I finally got somebody I can call my My one time for the one time I got a girl that compliments my fly And when it goes down, I know she gon' ride I finally got somebody I can call my My one time for the one time I remember when we were still in college And your girl's boyfriend friends was always trying to holler Not a lot Chain sand stand, but they don't want these problems. Let the top fold, ride slow. Let them know I got you. Never been insecure, but I don't play about you. Don't care who you were before or what they say about you. We fresh like air, no pollute. When he came too far, there's no flu. When you on my arm, you look great. Let them hate, cause they on mute. And girl, I brought you around my mom and them. Now I can't come around without you. I got money and respect, but you know that that pussy's power. Type that make any man feel rejection. I was no coward. Got your heart in my possession. Guess you can say it's ours. You find life. Let me just say you gifted, no understatement, let me rephrase it, you so exquisite, I'd be dumb if I didn't, turn you into my missus, been through your ups and downs, but with me you only get it. I got it. a girl that compliments my fly, and when it goes down, I know she gon' ride, I finally got somebody I can call my, my one time for the one time, I got a girl that compliments my fly, and when it goes down, I know she gon' ride, I finally got somebody I can call my. Different brats.